Tonight, a tense calm hangs over Haiti, though it is still a very dangerous place. The recent uprising left at least 130 people dead and many more fearing for their lives. But even before this latest violence, Haiti was an awful place for children, not only because of the fighting, but from a runaway AIDS epidemic which has left thousands of children dead, infected, or orphaned. Malnutrition and starvation are rampant, and help has been coming from all over, including some very unlikely places. Tonight, the extraordinary story of a former Playboy Playmate in the States who for the past decade has been trying to improve the lives of Haitian children. When Susie Kraybacher first came to Port-au-Prince, she asked to be taken to where the poor people live. And since then, she has taken charge of an abandoned children's unit at Haiti's main hospital, and she's set up six schools and three orphanages. Her mission, despite the unrest, is to improve the lives of Haiti's children. And joining me now from Port-au-Prince is Susie Kraybacher. Give me a sense of what it's been like these last few days, especially since Sunday when President Aristide left the country. Uh, the scenes of looting that we've seen have been extraordinary, and I'm sure your organization was touched as well. Actually, in the last two days, uh, we've been in crisis survival mode uh, at all of our facilities. We have three orphanages and six schools, and we're running on uh, survival mode now. We've cut the kids down to one meal a day, um, so we have a lot of screaming children. But right now, uh, we haven't got one grain of rice left in our warehouses, and most of the international aid organizations I know are coming to us, asking us for help. Uh, we've been calling for em emergency um, food aid. We're out of diapers. They took every diaper we have. We go through about 6,000 a month. So mm. you can imagine that we are in a sanitary crisis as well. Um, Seaboard Marine today has agreed to ship for us uh, five containers of emergency aid. So that was huge. We think that uh, we have at least four uh, containers, 40-foot containers of beans. Uh, we're hoping we're down to our last 20 um, boxes of dried fish and we've got 1,889 children to feed plus 150 employees who can't get home. It's extraordinary to hear you talk about having to, to scrounge here for this and scrounge there for that, but that's really what you've been doing for the last decade in Haiti. Give us a sense of your mission there and why it's so important for an attractive American woman to be down there in the darkest, most desolate despairing parts of Haiti to try to help these kids? Well, I, you know, when I first started, I, um, I wasn't educated to do this kind of thing. I, I didn't finish high school, so um, it wasn't like something that came natural. My husband and I didn't think we'd ever have children. We agreed on that, and now we have almost 2,000, so uh, it was a little bit of a different change uh, for me, but um, in, the, uh, in the last few years, it's sort of become my mandate in life. Um, I think I know now why I was born, and I love it. Those kids, to me, are are, are everything in mm -hmm. my life. Um, my husband, we treat them like our own. Uh, we do, you know, of course, can't be their mother and father because we do want them to be adopted into wonderful families, but uh, I did this because when I was a child, I was in the foster care system. I was uh, sexually abused from the time I was four to eight, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, this has been the greatest therapy I've ever had. You're obviously a very beautiful woman. Um, most of our viewers would not be surprised looking at you to know that you were a Playboy Playmate in May of 1983. How did you make the extraordinary leap from Hugh Hefner and the mansion in Los Angeles to the slums of Haiti? Well, when I was eight years old, I decided that um, I was never going to have anything like that happen to me again. And I decided the day I saw these kids that I would never let anything uh, that was in, within my control happen to them. Um, you know, it's, it's really strange that in the U.S. we really don't understand that so close to us is the country of Haiti. And it's been here for 200 years. And you were just now hearing a whole lot about it, but it's been here for 200 years. And it is apocalyptic tragedy to see the condition in which some of the, the children uh, survive and, and don't survive. And to be able to do um, anything for them, I think uh, I, I had a wonderful life uh, when I was in um, the modeling business, but this is so much more important, and I, I'm sure I wasn't born to be uh, a playmate mm -hmm. or a centerfold. We know what it's like. We've seen the newsreels on the television. 
marauding gangs going back and forth, different groups, all of whom seem to be bent on destroying each other, destroying the neighborhoods in which they live, in which you operate, and yet you have to deal with these people, I guess to get protection for your orphanages and your schools. There's, there's an interesting relationship. How do you do this without ending up dead yourself? Well, um, I think that it's a, it's a matter of faith. Um, this is, uh, I was born without the fear gene, I guess, because <laughs> I, I don't think, uh, you know, the, when I, the, the only time that I've ever been really fearful here is when I've seen uh, a child uh, just about to die, and, and then I, I don't remember uh, how we managed to, to save it, but it's, it's like seeing a child die is the most fearsome thing I've ever seen. And I think that I lost a whole lot of selfishness and self-concern uh, when I saw that I, I can literally save tens of thousands of kids with so little. And uh, I, I think that, you know, I know where I'm going. I know where I was born. Uh, there's no reason to be afraid. I have a lot of little angels up in heaven watching me. And um, it just hasn't come, it just hasn't come, uh, it, it affects my husband a little more than me, I think. It must feel at times like you're using a medicine dropper, though, to fill up a bathtub. The need is so great. Infant mortality is so huge in that country. Mm. One person, though, can make a difference. Well, you know, I, I, I felt like, uh, I was telling a friend of mine uh, down here that I feel like I'm drinking the ocean a teaspoon at, at a time. Uh, right now because things are so debilitated and we are really wounded uh, here but we are one of the only organizations that is still standing strong and we uh, do we do feel like we're gonna get a lot of support and the kids are so brave they've been in the middle of all the gunfire we had one little girl who was shot three times in the stomach in mm. uh, uh, crossfire and uh, I'm telling you the kid laughs now she's oh. she's so brave and so strong and all these kids they th they've been they cover my eyes they don't want me to see it when oh. we go by a dead body they cover my eyes and because they're afraid I won't come back mm -hmm. and uh, you know it just is the strength these are superheroes well these kids are superheroes a lot of people uh, do you would know what say the goal you're... is uh, we, we ask <laughs> no 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 I'm not <laughs> but you know what they they we had a, um, a, a little class meeting with all the kids and do you know what they uh, we ask them what they wanted to be when they grow up now that Aristide is gone What's they that? all want to be president <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Well, the job is open, the last I heard. They may need to be a little bit that's older right. in order to apply. Uh, Susie Craybacher, it's an extraordinary mission that you are still in Haiti um, participating in, and I know we'll put on our website some information for our viewers to learn how they can be a part of it if they feel so inclined. Thank you. Thank you so much.